This is Lori LeBay, the founder of Alzheimer's Speaks and your host here on Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. I want to thank you for joining us. I um, I just love all of our loyal listeners, and I so appreciate you taking the time to listen to us, follow us, share and like these episodes, because there's always people in our circle that need this information, and that really truly is our goal. So continue to please push this out through your Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever it might be, and help help us build a sense of community and collaboration and give people comfort in the needed information and resources that they need. If you are listening with us live today, you can always call in and ask questions as well. That number is 323 870-4602. That's 323-870-4602. Again, I appreciate you uh, joining us on Alzheimer Speaks Radio, where our focus is to shift our dementia care around the world from crisis to comfort. Um, For those of you that are new, I, I get, you know, Sitting with this disease can be difficult. My mom lived with it for 30 years, so I understand the isolation, the frustration, um, the guilt, the exhaustion that sometimes can can come on this path. But I, I also was able to find the path of joy and purpose and passion. So listen in and let us help you live better alongside with dementia. Now, before we get into our topic today, which is, I think, going to be really helpful for people about how do we reduce some of these medical costs that we have, I want to give a shout out to a a few organizations. One is the Alzheimer's um, Community Action Team, Alzheimer's and Dementia Community Action Team in Roseville, Minnesota, which I'm a part of. We are doing a survey on airport travel and we would love to hear from you just visit my main site which is alzheimerspeaks.com that's alzheimerspeaks.com and you can click right on the the graphic and it'll take you right to the survey and the survey is specifically for those with early to mid memory loss and their care partners to fill out I also want to give a shout out to the Memory Cafe directory. They are doing such a wonderful job organizing and helping people find the Memory Cafes now in the U.S., which is pushing 700. And you can just go to memorycafe.com to get your Memory Cafe listed or to find one in your area. If you're not sure what they are, basically a Memory Cafe is a gathering of like-minded individuals who are dealing with dementia, and it's for the person with early to mid-memory loss and their care partners. Um, Truly, uh, it builds a great sense of community, and it's a great resource for everyday tips in terms of of living with the disease. Last, I want to give a shout out to the Stall Catchers game. If you're not familiar with them, they are absolutely fantastic. Um, This is actually a research project where we as individuals can actually play a game that analyzes real data. Again, just go to uh, stallcatchers.com for more information on that. And again, for all of our initiatives and projects, or if you're looking for keynotes and training, uh, please visit alzheimerspeaks.com, and we would love to talk to you. Now, let's get to our show today. As I've been posting this around social media, you know, we've been talking about helping patients save money by utilizing needy meds. And it's been fun to see the comments come in because some people have said, oh, I've been using this for 20 years and I let all my clients know. And others say, hey, I'm going to listen in because I don't know a thing. 
And I have to tell you, I didn't know about them until I ran across them. And so um, as our motto goes here with Alzheimer's Speaks, we want to raise the voice of other services, products, and tools to help you out. So we're really lucky today. We have Rich Segal with us, who's the co-founder and president of Needy Meds. He is retired from family and occupational medicine physician who co-founded Needy Meds back in 1997. And he is a graduate of the Medical College of Ohio at Toledo and completed his family medicine residency at Eastern Maine Medical Center. And so uh, welcome, Rich. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I want to thank you for asking me to participate in this project. Well, I'm thrilled to have you because I your website is just a wealth of information. But before we dive into that, I always like to ask my guests if they have been personally touched in their own circle of friends or family by dementia. Well, my mother had multi-infarct dementia. So I can guess the answer is yes. And, of course, when I was in practice, I had many patients that suffered from uh, various types of dementia. Okay. Well, great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I want to start out by saying why did you start Needy Meds, and then we'll get into what it's all about. Sure. Back in 1997, I was talking to a friend who was a medical social worker, and she told me about the pharmaceutical patient assistance programs. These are the programs that help people who can't afford medications get them for free. I had never heard of these programs and thought it was, it was very exciting to learn about them. Coincidentally, I had also recently taught myself how to design and code websites. I've always been interested in computers, and I said, this would be a good and useful and fun project. You have the data. I have this new skill I want to use. And so one thing led to another, and we started out with needy meds. Back then, it was totally virtual. Now we have 30 employees Wow. So, yeah, you have definitely grown over the years, that's for sure. Why don't you tell us what you do? Because you go to your site and there's so, I mean, you've got so many buttons and things for people to access. Can you kind of explain to us what types of resources people can find there? Sure. We strive to have all the resources that can help people who are having difficulty covering the cost of their health care. We're not insurance. We're an information source. I like to say we're like the yellow pages. We give you the resource information, then you have to follow through. So we do not help people apply directly. We give them the information that they would need to apply. We do not have our own program as such. We list other programs. So we're an information source. As I said, we're like the yellow pages. We have information on about 35,000 programs right now. Wow. that it, I mean, and, you know, when, you, when you're in this situation, it's so difficult because you just don't know where to start. And so to be able to go to one spot to find that information is just, it, it's just amazing. Um, and, you know, I'm looking at your website right now, and, you know, across the tabs, you've got, you know, your homepage, you've got patient savings, you've got advocates, how to get started, different services, you know, your story about you, um, some news information and blog. Um, how, where should somebody start in terms of, of going to your site? Does that vary depending on what their, what their needs are? It does. We have three general audiences. One are advocates, the other are patients themselves, and the third is friends or family that are trying to help somebody. So assuming that you fit in one of the last two categories, you're trying to help a friend or a family member, or you're looking for assistance for yourself, the place to really start is patient savings. And if you go there, we have little boxes that have all the different types of information. Now, most people who come to needy meds are looking for assistance with their, the cost of medications. So if you go to patient savings, you'll see a box that says prescription assistance. You can look up drugs there to see if it's on a program, any sort of program that we know of. Click on the, the drug name, and it will take you to the program. 
and then you can read about the various types of programs, and you can find them by brand name or by generic name or by the name of the program. We have about 380 of what are called patient assistance programs. These are the programs funded and designed by the pharmaceutical manufacturers that give away billions of dollars worth of drugs every year to people who meet eligibility requirements. So this is for the uninsured or underinsured people. So that's where most people come to start with. Okay. Now, I also see on this page you have information about medical transportation and retreats and camps, um, scholarships, government programs, um, and then you have additional resources, um, a diagnosis specific. I mean, it just, it goes on and on and on, and even for trying to find a a free or low-cost clinic. Um, you've got some some resources there as well. We we try to list any resource that would help people, and it, it's by medical condition. So as you said, we do have a lots of different um, categories: the free low cost sliding scale clinics. We have medical clinics, dental clinics, those that provide mental health services or substance abuse services, and we have about eighteen thousand of those throughout the country listed. Um, We also have a section called, as you said, Diagnosis Specific. And these are programs that help people based upon their diagnosis. And there's all sorts of programs. Some are in this category. Some are national, some are regional, some are very local. So, for example, there are programs that help people who lose their hair due to chemo, for example, and can't afford a wig. They will help them with wigs. There are programs that will help people... um, who want to have what's called uh, cold caps. These are caps you put on your head like a swim cap, and they cool the scalp during chemo, which lessens hair loss. So you can there are programs that will help you cover the cost of those. So it goes on and on and on. Transportation, as you said, medical transportation. Um, we also have a section called Help with Prescription Assistance Applications. There's about 1,200 programs we know of that will work with people to help them find the programs they need to apply to. So if you're not computer literate, if you're not, if you have other issues, these programs will help people apply to the programs. So we try to have everything we can think of, as I said, that might be of value to people who are having financial problems. Okay, wonderful. Now, in the advocate section, is that for, like, social workers and things like that? Um, That's correct. I mean, anybody can go there. There's no secrets. But this is if if your job is helping people apply or find assistance, this is where you want to go. You can learn more about needy meds. We have an online training program. You can learn about the newsletters we send out. You can learn about our drug discount card there, software that we offer, or if you just want to give brochures about needy meds to hand out to clients. So that's what this section is designed for. We also do a number of webinars. I think next uh, this month, I forgot which month we're in, we have about 10 webinars scheduled over the, the month on various topics. Some of them talk about needy meds and how to get the most from the website. Others... We may partner with organizations and do a specific webinar on that on that diagnosis. So we vary what we do, but we're very much into education now, trying to make people aware of what's available. So with your with your webinars, um, do you once you have them, is that something people can go back and and look at later, or is it yeah you have to catch it live or you miss out on it? Oh, no, we record them all. We we have a very active and complete um, sec- section in, on YouTube with all the webinars that we've done. So you can always go back and look at them. Um, we try to make these available in any way. We can do, as I said, the regularly scheduled webinar, or if you work for an organization and you'd like to have one just for your team, maybe you have times when you do education or a lunchtime webinar, We can set those up, and all they need to do is just contact us either via email or on the phone and talk to Carla, and she'll be happy to set one up directly for any group. 
Wonderful. Now, I'm looking at your um, a durable medical equipment discounts, too, which is everything from crutches to walkers to sole inserts to it looks like um, portable pots um, to um, bladder control pads. I mean, it's it just seems like it's it's endless here on this. And you're you're talking a savings of of um, potentially 40 percent off list price of, of a lot of different items. That's a huge savings. Well, it's it's an area that a lot of people ask us about, and we are working with a company that was willing to do this because they understand the needs that people have. So this is the 40% off is if you're a cash-paying patient, and all you need to do is get our drug discount card, and you can print one right off the website and give them the numbers at the bottom of the card. And then they know you're from Needy Meds, and they will give you this discount automatically. And it's for a wide variety of things. Uh, a lot of diabetic supplies, not insulin, unfortunately. They're not a pharmacy. But for all different types of meters and meter supplies, as you mentioned, the incontinence supplies, which might be particularly appropriate for your audience, mobility devices, all sorts of things. They also have a telemedicine service where you get a discount because if you come there through needy meds. Well, that's fantastic. So can you tell us a little bit more about the the drug discount card itself? And, uh, you know, it looks like it's pretty easy. It's just like, you know, click here, you know, <laughs> to, to print it out and, and apply. How did, how did you pull that all together? Because that's just such a, I mean, everyone's looking to save a buck one way or the other out there these sure. days with their medical costs. There were lots of drug discount card programs out there, and we tried to look at the programs and say, how could we be different? How could we be better? Because they all do basically the same thing, which is give a discount. So we've come up with a few ways that were a little different than the other cards. One is, as a nonprofit, any income from the card that we make does not go to an investor's pocket. It goes towards helping us attain our mission, reach more people, offer more savings. So that's one way. The second way is we gather no user identifiable information. There's no registration, no sign up, no enrollment, no eligibility requirements. Anyone can use the card. As I like to say, the only eligibility requirement to use our card is you have to be breathing. And um, so we get so we do not track by individual. Many of the other cards do that. They track by individual. So you use your card and buy a diabetic medicine, all of a sudden you're getting emails or mail in the in your mailbox for all sorts of different diabetic things. You won't get that from us cuz we do not even get that information. We do not know who's using the card. We're also different in that we would rather people check the website and see if they can get the drugs for free before they use our card. Because if you can get them for free, that's the best deal possible. And that's the patient assist, the pharmaceutical patient assistance programs, like I mentioned. So those are ways that we differ. The card is, is totally free. You can download a paper one and use it today. You can send us a self-addressed stamped envelope, and we'll send you a plastic one. We're right now we're saving people a couple million dollars a month would like to see that grow, and the only way it's going to grow is if more people use the card. Okay, great. Now, you also have something in here that I find interesting. You have a drug pricing calculator. What is that about? That are, is... Are, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. That's how you can determine the the price with our drug discount card at your local pharmacies so that that's you'll know roughly what you're paying. Now, the prices that we give are an estimate because these prices change every day. But that gives you an idea of what you will be paying for it. And it's important that people know the prices vary considerably from pharmacy to pharmacy. I'm always astounded when I look. Sometimes it's only a few dollars, but I've seen the difference be hundreds of dollars between one pharmacy chain and another chain. So you do need to, it does pay to shop around. Now, there's a downside to shopping around because you may find that you're using two or three different pharmacies for different drugs, and no one pharmacy knows all the medicines you're on. 
So that's a downside to shopping around. But on the other hand, you can save thousands of dollars over the years if you do shop around. We strongly recommend that anybody who's experiencing problems paying for the drugs always ask the pharmacist, is that the best price? Until recently, there were gag rules in place. I don't know if you heard of those. But depending upon your insurance carrier, the pharmacist was not allowed to say, here's a cheaper price. If you asked, they would tell you. But they couldn't initiate that discussion. That's changed for everything but Medicare. But if you are on Medicare and you go in and say, is that the cheapest price, then they can offer, if there's a cheaper price, they can offer it to you. So in other words, if the cash price of the drug is cheaper than your copay, you can go outside your insurance. You cannot use your insurance and get a better price. Okay. So that was one thing I was going to ask. <clears throat> with your, with your uh, drug discount cards, is that cash only? Or can that be used in combination with? All the drug insurance. discount cards are cash only. Okay. okay. Now, I, I've been told and, and seen 10 to 20% of the time the card gives a better price than the copay. Now, realistically, if your copay is $3 or $5, you're not going to beat that by much, if at all. But if you're on a Tier 3 drug where your copay may be $100 or more, you can sometimes beat the price. Now, many pharmacists will say, oh, you have insurance, you have to use it. That is definitely not true. You never have to use your insurance. Just think, if you get in a, in a minor fender bender and have a small dent, you don't have to use your auto insurance. You can do it yourself and get a, and pay it out of pocket. The same thing is true for health care. You never have to use your insurance. Okay. Well, that's good to know because I think... You know, people a lot of times think, or sometimes they don't even think. They just do because it's out of habit and um, don't even think twice. Now, you also have, it looks like you've got listed a, a safe needle disposal that can assist people maybe that are, are diabetic or, or, you know, have some form of insulin or shots um, to make sure that they're disposing of their needles properly. Uh, it's, right. it's this amazing. Is this is a site that has information on how to safely and legally dispose of home-generated shops for every state. So we're talking about needles, like you mentioned. We're talking about lancets. We're talking about injector pens, etc. So we also list sites where people can drop off their used shops in a container. We have about close to 4,000 of those throughout the country now. So if someone is a diabetic and they want to know how to properly dispose of their used needles and, and uh, lancets at home, we have all the information. And, again, that information, like everything, is free to individuals. So you can just go there and look it up, and then you know what to do. Okay. And we're always expanding that, trying to add more collection sites as we learn about them. Wonderful. Now, you also have, this looks really interesting, Needy Med Storylines. What can you tell us a little bit about that? It looks like it's an app to help manage our health. That's exactly what it is. We partnered with an organization that, that set this up, and it's a smartphone app that you can use that helps you monitor the progress with your diagnosis, side effects. There's a drug discount card built into it medication reminder, a refill reminder, trying to put everything you may need in one place. And you can keep track of the side effects of medication, keep a diary of how you're feeling so you can, when you go back and talk to the provider, you have the information in front of you. So it's, it's a useful tool for those who feel the, the desire to be more involved with what's going on, to keep better track of how they're feeling, et cetera monitor their blood sugars, et cetera. And it's totally free. It, I was going to ask, was there a fee for that? Because a lot of these things out there have a fee. So that is that is absolutely wonderful. And what a great way to be able to track things and be able to easily share with your, your doctor when you're out there as well. Um, now, I'm looking, I, I just, I cannot believe how much stuff you have on this site. I think it's just fantastic. You also have a health web navigator. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. There's lots of health information on the web, some excellent, some so-so, and some totally wrong. 
and Health Web Navigator, it's still in its beta form, is a site where people can go and get a professionally done, re read a professionally done review by a medical professional of about 300 different health-related websites, talking about ease of use of the website, content, how good it is, et cetera. So you get an idea whether you're getting good information or not. And we're looking to expand this and, and grow it. But it, it helps because, as I said, there's so much bad information out there, so much wrong information. And it's difficult to know the difference. So that's what this is all about. We're looking to have, we haven't done it yet, a little seal on the websites that, that we feel are legit. So we're working on that. We also have a website called Be Medwise, which talks about how to safely use, store, and dispose of medications and other aspects of medication. So we're working on, on those websites. We're working on a number of other websites. One of them that we're just beginning to put the, we have the data, now we've got to put the website together, is called Passing on Planning. And this is a website for people who, want to plan for their ultimate demise in terms of how they want things to happen, things they should do, or for people who have lost a loved one and now have to deal with what's there in terms of things you need to think about. So we're working on that website. Um, it'll cover the obvious things in terms of wills and trusts, et cetera, but we're trying to think of everything possible. One of the things we're talking about is social media. How is your social media accounts going to be handled after you're gone? I still get Facebook reminders that are automatically generated from someone who died two years ago. Uh, that may disturb some people. They may not like I, that. Yeah, I just had that happen to me today. I said happy birthday, and it's like I didn't know that they passed. And then I had to go back in and correct what I had written, you know, and it was like, uh, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't know. I just talked to somebody and they said he was doing fine and he died in January. I felt horrible that I didn't know that. And it, it's happened a lot to me. I know. It does. And how would you want your Facebook friends, your people in your, your address book to be notified on your passing? Well, we're trying to, we're not giving the answer. We're not telling you this is what they should do. We're try, trying to raise the questions, come up with a checklist, and suggested ways you can handle it. You know, how do you have your um, health care proxy available for the proxy when they need it? All Good sorts point. of things that people may not think about. And getting older myself, it's been good because it's caused me to think about a lot of these things. You know, simple things like I have some electronic subscriptions to magazines. Well, they need to know about them so they can cancel them. Simple things that you don't think about. Yep, yep, that routine, everyday everyday stuff that we just take for granted. Well, that sounds mm -hmm. like that'll be a really, a really um, a neat uh, application for people to be able to tap into, too. Um, now, what is Heal Thunder without the E in the, in the thunder? Right, just to be different. Um, Heal okay. Funder is a play. It's a platform that people can use to raise funds, like GoFundMe, except it's only for medical issues, and it's a little different than the others in that one is that the pe person who's doing the the fundraising has to provide some documentation that their health care issue is real. We've all heard about the people who claim they have cancer or some other disease and raise all this money, and it turns out they don't have the disease. So we wanted to deal with that by saying you have to provide medical documentation that you really have the disease. The second thing is we don't just give the money to the person who's running the campaign. They give us the bill, and we would pay the bill directly. So you know the money is going to what they say it's going for, and it's not going into their pocket. Mm -hmm. So that's how it's set up. It's a totally free service, and we'd like to see more people using it. We have information as to ideas as to how to run the campaign, things to do, et cetera. But, again, it's just like on any of these programs. It's up to the person to actually spread the word about what they're trying to do. Exactly. And then I see that you also tap into the Amazon 
SMILE program, which a lot of people don't know what that is. Do you mind just sharing uh, a little bit about the Amazon SMILE program? Sure. Amazon has a program for nonprofits where you can register with them. They make sure you're for real. And then when people make a purchase, instead of going to Amazon.com, they go to smile.amazon.com. And 0.5% of what they spend, Amazon donates to the nonprofit. So we encourage everybody to get a smile.amazon.com account. Obviously, we'd like to have them pick Needy Meds as their charity of choice. But more importantly, they should have an account and pick some charity because otherwise they're leaving money on the table. It costs the the purchase of the Amazon user nothing. They don't add to your, your to your costs at all, and it just helps the nonprofit of your choice. Okay. Well, and what a nice, easy way to to be able to to assist in that fashion. Like you said, um, it's just kind of a no brainer, really. You know, with with oh, it definitely. all. Definitely. Definitely. Oh, wonderful. Well. Um, Let's talk about, you know, what's next for you. We've touched on probably not er- everything on your website, but we've we've covered quite a bit here. What what else um maybe have I missed that you'd like to talk about and maybe we can get into what what's next for you guys? Sure. We have a couple of of projects in the planning stage. One of them where the working name is Needy Pets. As you know, as everybody knows, pets have become a very important part of many people's families. And having a pet and keeping it healthy is getting very expensive. And some people just can't afford it. So they have to make choices as to where they're going to put their limited funds. There are, just like for humans, many programs that help with pet expenses. So we're working on gathering that sort of data. And if we can get the funding, we're going to set up a website that would have all this information. It'll be similar to Needy Meds except it would be for your pets, with free de- um, veterinary care, immunizations, uh, surgery, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one project we're working on. Um, another one that we're working on is called Health Savings News. There are many ways that people can take the initiative to save on their health care costs. And what we want to do is build a website that has all these hints and ideas and things that people can do. Obviously, a lot of the information is on the Needy Meds website in terms of shopping around, et cetera, et cetera, but there are many other things you can do. And so we're, we want to get that website going. Those are a couple things that we have in the works. Um, we're just looking for funding for these so that we can get them up and running and be as comprehensive as we are with Needy Meds. Oh, fantastic. Now, if people go to your blog, what what would they expect to see there? Oh, it varies. We have all sorts of different topics. We've talked about the diseases that have special months for them and what's going on with that disease and also talking about the resources that Needy Meds has to help people who have that problem. So we're not, we try not to be too controversial, um, but that's what we have on the blog. We also have an active social media component in terms of, of what we're doing, announcements, as I mentioned, et cetera. So we try to keep people aware of all the educational things we're doing. We have a, an agreement with drugs.com. You may be familiar with them. They have a lot of good information about thousands of drugs, and we incorporate links to their website from our drug list so people can find out more information about the drug through drugs.com. We also have an arrangement with a company called Meds on Q that has created videos about many drugs. So you can go directly from the drug on Needy Meds to their website to watch the video about the drug. And then we just established a relationship with something called Medivisor, which provides summaries for lay people of recent research on various different health topics. So you can look up a health topic and then go to Medivisor and sign up to get emails about what they find in the literature about that diagnosis. So we're working on education. Those are some of the things we have up and running or in the plans. Wow, it's amazing. When you started this way back when, did you ever think you'd be in this deep? Uh, I mean, with... No. with <laughs> it's incredible. I never did. 
we put up the patient the resources you have. We put up the patient assistance programs, and my partner at the time, Libby, and I said, well, that's it. There's nothing else to put up. And over time, we keep discovering more things. We added the free clinics, for example, because people would call us on the, to on the helpline and say, my drug's on a PAP, I qualify, but I don't have a doctor. Would you write the script for me? And I would say, no, I can't do that. It's not legal. It's not ethical. Um, it's not good practice but they couldn't afford to go to a physician. So that's why we said, let's see if we can find a list of physicians. We couldn't find a comprehensive list of free, low-cost sliding scale clinics, so we decided to do it ourselves, and that's how we ended up with over 18,000 of them. Wow. Can you explain to people what the PAP is? Because sometimes people don't know some of the acronyms sure. and stuff that we use. Sure. That stands for Patient Assistance Program or Pharmaceutical Assistance Program. These are programs that are funded by the pharmaceutical manufacturers that give away billions of dollars worth of drugs to millions of people who meet the eligibility requirements. And eligibility requirements are based primarily on income, household size, and insurance status, sometimes residency, sometimes diagnosis. So that if you have no health insurance and you're on a drug, you might qualify for one of these programs where you get the medicines directly from the pharmaceutical company at no cost. So we list about 380 of these programs right now that cover thousands of different drugs. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't know about these. If you watch one of the ads on TV for medications made by AstraZeneca, at the very end, they say, if you can't afford this medicine, AstraZeneca may be able to help. They're talking about their patient assistance program. Now, these are different than copay cards. Copay cards are also programs sponsored by the pharmaceutical manufacturers that help with the insurance copay. So you have to have health insurance that covers the drug in order to participate in the copay program. And we list all of those under the coupons, copays, and rebate section. So again, we try to list every way that people might be able to save on health care costs. Okay. Wonderful. And I see here, too, you have, for organizations that are offering professional assistance, you have a, a software that can help them track some of these patient assistance um, programs that are out there as well. So, I mean, there's not much right. you haven't thought of. <laughs> no, that's called PAP Tracker. It's not for individuals. It's for organizations, as you said, that help people apply to patient assistance programs. All of these programs have an application, and you have to complete it before you can apply. Many of the applications are quite complex. So what this does is it allows you to enter your patient information once. If you find a program, you can hit a button, and it will print out a completed application for you. Because you have to always get them signed, and always the doctor has to have some participation in the application process. So that just simplifies and automates the process for organizations that help people apply to PAPs. So that's what they are in a nutshell. Okay. Now you also have a volunteer ambassador program for needy meds. Can you explain, because maybe we might have some listeners out there that would be interested in getting involved in that. What, what does that take? What kind of commitment are you looking for? We're looking for people who would go to health fairs, and other appropriate programs in their area, in their locale, and distribute information about needy meds. So we have a very specific training program that people go through to learn about needy meds. We supply them with all the information, with business cards, et cetera, so they can act as our representative in their local area. We also have a presentation they can use if they wish to talk about needy meds. So it's to help spread the word. The biggest obstacle we run into is people not knowing about what we do. Um, I will give a talk to social workers or physicians or nurses, and it seems like a certain number of people in the audience know about needy meds and use it all the time, but many people have never heard of us, and they may work for the same organization and just have never heard of us. So we, the biggest obstacle we have is spreading the word. The second mm -hmm. biggest obstacle is people don't believe we're for real. 
You know, we say we have all this information. It's all there. It's all free. You don't have to give us anything about yourself. You can come, find what you need, and leave. And they say, yeah, sure. What's the catch? And there is no catch. The same with the drug discount card. There's no catch with the drug discount card. It's free. It's easy to use. And you can the potential is there to save hundreds of dollars. Well, that's fantastic. I, I just, like I said, um, Rich, I am so impressed with what you have pulled together and the amount of resources. And, you know, I wish I would have known about this earlier on. Um, I'll definitely be uh, spreading the word. One of the things that I, I don't know if this would um, work for you guys or not, but even reaching out to the library systems, I think would be a really uh, a great route to get the word out about your your services. Because I know you have a lot of brochures and things, and I know our libraries anyways here in Minnesota and Ramsey County we actually have, um, they have dedicated space for all, the Alzheimer's and dementia, um, and they are putting packets together for engagement and education. But I could see um, this information being slipped right into those packets and be really useful for family and, and friends. I would love to. We actually tried a project with some libraries in Texas, and to be honest, it just didn't work. It's a matter of finding the right person. As okay. you probably know, you have, you have to find the right person in an organization who is basically what I call your champion there mm -hmm. and would love to participate in programs like that. We're participating in a program with the Alzheimer's local group in the northwest, Washington, Oregon, Idaho, maybe Montana, I forget, where they have packets that they give to neurologists, neurology practices, to give out to people diagnosed with Parkinson's. So now we're going to have our brochure in their packets that they give out. So we would love to participate. We work with a number of different organizations um, trying to help them, help their members find the assistance they need. I do want to emphasize the toll-free helpline because we encourage people to call if they don't use a computer, if they have trouble with literacy, with vision, whatever, they can call and we will give them all the information that they need over the phone. And if I can give that toll-free number, sure. it's 1-800-503-6897. It's 800-503-6897. And it's staff from about 8.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday Eastern Time. And we do have native Spanish speakers on the line, so if people feel more comfortable talking in Spanish, we do have people that can help them. So Wonderful. although we get four to six, four to 6,000 calls a month, I'd like to see that grow. So anyone can call that number. Well, good. Well, I'm making myself some notes on some um, referrals I'm going to make to you because I think Carol Jackson with our library system would be very interested in this. I think Cindy Lazinski in northern Colorado, who is um, educating um, not only families but hospitals, would be interested in this in clinics. And then there's a, a group in Minnesota uh, that is also a clinic that I think would be great. And then our the memory cafes as a whole, uh, I think this would be a fantastic resource for them to have. So I know I will add that into my personal resource list for people, but I want to hook you up with um, Dave who has memorycafes.com and um, maybe he can do a, a little feature newsletter that he sends out to these 700 memory cafes as well. I uh, can't promise, but he's he's pretty open to ideas, and I think he would be very interested in this as well. Anything else that we haven't covered? I, I just, like I said, I'm just in awe of what you've accomplished and, and what you are doing to help so many people. Uh, it's just I fantastic. Think, you know, I think we've covered it well. Um, the one other thing I want to mention is even though it's called needy meds, there are many programs that will help people that are not considered needy. Um, some of these programs will help people with four, five, six hundred percent of federal poverty level. That means a family of four with no health insurance could have an income of eighty thousand dollars, ninety thousand dollars, and still qualify. Nobody would call that family needy, 
but yet they would qualify for some of these programs. So we really encourage everybody to look and see if there's a program available that would help them. The other thing I suggest is check back because we're always making changes. We're always adding new programs. So just because there's nothing there for you today doesn't mean it'll be the same situation in a month or two. Okay. Well, wonderful. And, again, I just want to um, give people the website again. It's needymeds.org. That's needy, N-E-E-D-Y, meds, M-E-D-S dot org. Or you can email them at info at needymeds.org. Again, that's info at needymeds.org. And once again, the helpline number is 800-503-6897. That's 800-503-6897. And again, Rich, I, I can't thank you enough for spending this time with us. I know this episode is going to help a lot of a lot of people, and it's going to get additional uh, into the additional hands of of advocates that can spread this information to to families in need as well. So keep up the great work and and keep us posted. And I like I said, I will be following up with an email with some with uh, some people to reach out to. I think it'll be very very interested in your work. So again, thank you. Well, thank you for this opportunity, and hopefully uh, we'll be in touch with some of the people you who are listening, and we'll be able to help them out. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, and thank you to our audience for joining us today on Alzheimer Speaks Radio. Again, we are here to focus and shift our dementia care culture around the world from crisis to comfort, and we do that by sharing other people's stories. What is their passion? How are they making a difference in the world? What are the needs that they're seeing and how should they be addressed? So I would encourage you to subscribe to our show. It's real easy to do. Just click on the button and you will be notified every time there is a new show where you'll be able to learn about new techniques and tips and resources to help you live a more gracious life alongside dementia. In closing, I just want to give a shout out to a couple other organizations. One is the Alzheimer's Research and Prevention Foundation. If you're looking for a holistic way um, to deal with your health, check them out. You will, you will get information on diet and exercise and meditation. They do a lot of educational programs there. And you just go to alzheimersprevention.org. That's alzheimersprevention.org. And then the A list is connecting families to researchers to better understand the needs of those living with dementia. And they're just short, simple surveys with maybe three questions. It doesn't take much time at all. And you can find them by going through usagainstalzheimers.org forward slash network forward slash a dash list again us against alzheimers.org forward slash networks plural forward slash a dash list and if you're not familiar with us against alzheimer's you're definitely want to going to check them out because they are doing incredible work again and please don't forget to check us out at alzheimerspeaks.com from there you'll be able to get to all of our projects and initiatives that we're working on, as well as uh, resources like the Dementia Chat videos, where I interview people that have dementia, and they tell us what life is like and, and how they would like us to adjust to better meet their needs and their family's needs. We have information on the memory cafes and so much more um, speaking and training um, lots of great stuff. So again, thank you so much and have a blessed week. And keep in mind, September is World Alzheimer's Month. So how are you going to make a difference? I know you can. Till next time. Bye now. Hey everybody, Jared Sebesti, your host of Retire Repurposed. This podcast is dedicated to help people transition into fulfilling and purposeful retirements. Retirement is a big life change. In fact, the two most dangerous years of a person's life are the year they were born and the year they retire. 
Few people could just flip the switch from working a career 30 or 40 plus years, retiring on Friday without methodical steps to living what we call a repurposed retirement. To listen now, search Retire Repurpose on your favorite podcast platform, Senior Resource, or Life Audio.